Hello, my name is Alex Howe. By day, I'm a professional astrophysicist, but right now, I'm putting on my mathematician's hat, because math YouTubers around the world are talking about their mega-fave numbers, their favorite numbers that are larger than one million. So today, I want to talk about one of my mega-fave numbers that comes up in physics, and it is... 2 to the 602 sextillion, 214 quintillion, 76 quadrillion power. This is a number you might encounter in statistical mechanics, which is the study of heat, energy, and thermodynamics through the statistical motions of molecules. And I could have put a bunch of different numbers there, but this is the clearest example of them. That exponent might look familiar. It's Avogadro's number, which some other mega-fave numbers YouTubers have already talked about. It's the definition of a mole, a unit we use when we want to count up atoms and molecules to get a useful amount of subchemical. It used to be the number of atoms in exactly 12 grams of carbon-12, but that was hard to measure. So in 2018, the International Bureau of Weights and Measures decided it would be easier to just define what it should be. So now Avogadro's number is exactly 602 sextillion, 214 quintillion, 76 quadrillion. Now this is already a very fine mega number. It's definitely more than one million, but this is just our starting point. Avogadro's number is a large number, but only a large number. I'm talking about something physicists like to call, and this is a technical term, very large numbers. Here's how it works. Say you have a box containing one mole of air, Avogadro's number of molecules. At room temperature, this is about 6 gallons, 24 liters. Maybe it's an empty aquarium. And all those molecules are moving around randomly. But then you start to wonder. If they're really moving randomly, that means there's a tiny chance that suddenly all of the molecules will rush to the left side of the aquarium. And the force would shatter the wall and there'd be glass all over your floor. Well, that's not good. What are the odds that will happen? We can use statistical mechanics to find out. If you think about it, each molecule is either in the left half of the aquarium or the right half. Sounds pretty simple, right? It's like a coin flip, heads or tails, left or right. Now let's number all the molecules. Give a number to each one from one to Avogadro's number. You can't actually tell molecules apart if they have the same atoms. This is just so you can keep track of them. Now write down whether each molecule is in the left or the right half of the aquarium. One possibility is that they're all on the left side. Another is that the first one million and one molecules are on the left and the rest are on the right. How many combinations are there in total? The answer is two times two times two times two times two for all the molecules. And that gets us my mega fave number, two to the 602 sextillion, 214 quintillion, 76 quadrillion. That's approximately this number in scientific notation, and as a shorthand, you can think of it as 10 to the 10 to the 23rd power. You might have heard of a Googleplex, which is 10 to the 10 to the 100th. This is a lot smaller than that, but it's still an insanely huge number of combinations. Physicists call numbers like these very large numbers because they totally swamp any other number in an equation. You can add, subtract, multiply, and divide very large numbers by regular large numbers, and they don't really change. Not in a way we care about, anyway. To see what I mean, let's look at that question again. What is the probability that all of the air molecules will suddenly rush to the left side of your aquarium? Well, there's only one way for all the molecules to be on the left, so it's 1 in 2 to Avogadro's number. So it looks like you're safe. But wait, that's only at one moment in time. What are the odds that it will happen sometime in the future, over some longer period? For that, we need to know how fast the random motions of the molecules are. How often does a molecule switch from one side of the aquarium to the other? Molecules in air move at about one and a half times the speed of sound. So depending on the shape of the aquarium, the fastest they could cross from one side to the other is about half a millisecond. But let's not calculate this over a second or a day or even a year. What are the odds that this will happen in the entire age of the universe? Divide the age of the universe by this box crossing time, and you have about 10 to the 21st, or 2 to the 70th, chances for it to happen. 
So to get the odds that all the molecules in your aquarium will wind up on the left side at some point in the entire age of the universe, we divide my megafave number by 2 to the 70th and get 1 in 2 to the 602 sextillion, 214 quintillion, 75 quadrillion, 999 trillion, 999 billion, 999 million, 999,930th power. Okay, that's kind of freaky. It looks like it's barely changed at all. And yet it has. It's changed by a factor of a billion trillion. But on these scales, it doesn't matter. These numbers are so incredibly huge that with any normal math, you barely even notice the change in the exponent. That's the weirdness of very large numbers, and that's what makes them my megafave numbers.